Praise the Lord. God bless you, everyone. This is Apostle Hopkins. I am going to take a little time this morning and uh, just a little bit and talk about what I call Deliverance Insight on night and dream manifestations that came in through emotional trauma. That's right, spiritual strongholds and dream manifestations that comes in through emotional trauma. Well, listen to it. Most of you know I've said, shared it many times that I go do a lot of what we call phone and Skype deliverances. Not, not only do I do that on phone and Skype or uh, Facebook uh, inbox messenger, I also have, been, I have started out years ago and still continue to do it in my conferences. But let me say something to you. <clears throat> when I tr get ready to carry someone through deliverance, what I do is take my time and begin to counsel with them. Now, I've been in deliverance for almost 45 years. I know that in some deliverance camp camps, when you use the term counseling, they immediately think you're talking about some kind of new age word, psychological cycle babble. And that is absolutely not what I'm talking about. And so many of you, when you are going to minister and pray with people, the Bible said there is safety in a multitude of counsel. The counsel I'm talking about in deliverance is the wisdom of being able to take the gifts of the spirit in your life and be able to discern through the spirit of wisdom, through the discerning of spirit, through the words of wisdom, through words of knowledge, to be able to discern what opened the gateway and the door in the life of the person you are ministering to. Now, I want to share a couple of things real quick with you guys, because I've got to soon get off of here, because I start my morning counseling sessions and deliverance sessions. But the scripture I'm going to come from, and what I'm talking about in this message is deliverance insight on night and dream manifestations that came in through emotional trauma. I'm using Psalms chapter 7, verse 1 and 2, and it reads like this, Lord my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me, lest he tear my soul like a lion, rending it in pieces while there is none to deliver. And I am specifically going to share with some of you insights to help you in ministering to other people. When people have gone through traumatic trauma growing up, here goes what happens. Number one, the key goal of the enemy is to fragment or destroy their soul or cause what we call simply emotional damage. Now that area needs the healing grace. And I ain't gonna use no term inner healing because you'll just, somebody will just take that and run with that and then everything I'm trying to say gets sidetracked. In other words, we need the power of the Holy Spirit to heal the damage and the wound that opened a door into their mind, will, emotion, and soul. Got it? Number two, demonic powers will often, and this is not always the case, demonic powers will also, will also take the gateway of trauma, traumatic shock, molestation or rape and they will enter in and use that as a portal to harass the person if you really get down to the just of it the demonic strongholds and someone who has been traumatically shocked wounded now i'm talking about you're setting with a person you're counseling with them and the holy spirit shows you through observation through revelation and through consultation, he shows you that that person talks to may come to you, and I'll give you a case, and I'm naming no one's name, and I won't be telling people's business, but I want you deliverance workers to understand it's a little bit more than just think of you just walk out, come out in Jesus' name, and it's all that done. You have to learn the technology and the technique of the Holy Spirit, how he will use you to bring healing to people's lives. I'm gonna share an incident. I was talking to an individual one time during a session, and as I was ministering to the individual, they said to me these words, Brother Hopkins, there's a spirit 
that seems to keep coming in my room. That thing terrorizes me. And she said, I cannot seem to stop it. Is it a, is it a, uh, she thought it was a marine spirit or a spirit marriage. As I was listening to her, the Holy Spirit spoke to me that that is not a marine spirit or a spirit marriage. That is a harassing demon that is related to traumatic shock that happened to her in her bedroom when she was growing up. Now, this was a grown woman telling me that in the dream, or are you listening, soldiers? Said, Apostle, in the dream that I have that keeps harassing me, I'm back in my bedroom. This figure comes in my bedroom, and it keeps harassing and tormenting me. Well, through the word of knowledge, through observation, through consultation, counseling that I was giving her, the Holy Spirit of God told me, said, look, that is not a spirit marriage that's coming at her. That is a stronghold of traumatic shock that, has, that she has buried in her subconscious mind. Many times the Holy Ghost, to keep us from snapping, will take and place hard to deal with things until the appropriate season of healing, the appropriate season of deliverance, he will place them in a place and God will bless you throughout your life and you will be going along pretty good. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Ghost will say, it is time. Some people have been harassed by an unidentified, unidentified manifestation that no matter how they are saved, how much baptism of the Holy Ghost they got, how much they love the Lord, from time to time, in the dream realm or in the physical realm, a manifestation will come forward and keep harassing them. Now, so as I was talking to this young lady, I said, sweetheart, I want you to listen to me real good. I said, that particular apparition that you're seeing in your dreams, that, that in that dream you go back to the bedroom where you was as a child, I said, listen to me. I said, are you ready, sweetheart? And I believe in handling people gently. I'm not one of those <laughs> kind of deliverance ministers. I am a gentle person because that's the grace on my life. Everybody does it the way they do. We're not here to debate how other people do things. I just don't want to get sidetracked because I'm too busy. As I begin to talk to her, I said, sweetheart, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you whether this is really God speaking through me on this. And by the way, I don't always think I'm right. I'd like to say at least, let's see if it is the Lord rather than, than be so arrogant to think I'm always right. I said, here goes what I feel that the Lord is showing me in this dream, concerning this dream. I said, sweetheart, do you have your head when you were a small child, someone come in the room and try to mess with you. And all of a sudden, a young lady says, oh, my God. I said, what is it, darling? And I tell them like this, sister, I don't need detail. I don't need graphic detail of what happened to you. Now, anybody that's supposed to be carrying you through deliverance that wants graphic detail, let your antenna go up. They don't need figurative graphic play-by-play -play of some stupid demon coming at you. Watch that kind of mentality in who's ministering to you. They should be discreetly, respectfully, with integrity, and leaving you with honor and dignity as they pray with you. So I said to her, I said, oh, kidding, sweetheart. I said, she said, brother, brother Hopkins, she said, I know what you're talking about. She said, when I was growing up, there was a family member that will come in the room and you will go after me and my sister. She said, matter of fact, me and my sister was talking about it not too long ago. I said, wait a minute. I said, in the middle of the night, she said, yes. They would sneak in y'all's room and y'all was very small kids. She said it happened to both of us. Now, here we go. Here goes the clincher. That particular predatory demon in that person, and I call it what it is, 
Because often when spiritual strongholds, demonic strongholds, wants to damage your emotion. Now, by the way, Brother Ivory, why does it want to damage my emotion? So that you will not be able to serve the Lord with all of our heart, all of my soul, and all of my mind. It is not about sexual gratification. It is about dismantling you emotionally. Because listen, if your emotions are jacked up, so will your discernment be jacked up. So will your prophetic word be jacked up. So will the presentation of how you talk, how you preach, and how you act with people. All of that is locked in with your emotional. You show me someone that is emotionally whole, that is emotionally stable, that is secure in their own soul, I'll tell you someone that will be a blessing to other people's lives. So what demons will do is use a predator spirit in a family, a molesting spirit or a person that hurts you, rejects you, wounds you. In this case, we're talking about a family member that was a predator that would ease in at night when the rest of the family was sleeping and begin to come at these two girls. So the, they, they, as they got older, they blocked it out of their memory, just about got it out of their memory. But when the Holy Ghost was getting ready to bring healing, while they were sitting with me, and I'm going to say that bad word once again, while they were sitting with me and I was counseling them about their wounds and the issues, listening clearly at what they said they were going through, the Holy Spirit revealed to me through a word of knowledge that this thing she saw in her dreams, this thing she saw coming at that bedroom door, coming in that room, and it was starting to torment her, that was a manifestation that had really happened through an individual. Yes, a person had done an act that traumatically shocked these young ladies, and they were having dreams and nightmares. Now, before we go, soldier, now, Brother Ivan, what you do with something like that? Glad you asked. Number one, you realize that you have a twofold healing that needs to take place. Number one, the wounds and their damaged emotion needs the power of the Holy Spirit to heal the damaged emotion. I love it when God says, I think it's Psalm 103, he restores my soul. Come on, somebody. He restores my hurt, wounded, damaged, abused, mind, will, and emotion. So you need the anointing to go there. Now, most of novices in deliverance, I know what you want to do. Come on, demon. Demon, you go. The blood of Jesus, come on. And you want to attack just demon. Listen, you go after the manifestation and never get to the root. What God was trying to do and what I'm trying to teach you soldiers is allow the gifting, allow the grace, allow the anointing that is upon your life to teach you how to go after the root cause. And guess what? Take time to hear the person's heart, hear what they're saying so that the Holy Spirit can bring truth from fiction in their life, so that the Holy Spirit can rightly divide what's actually happening to them. Listen to their heart. So here we go. What I ended up doing, I said, I said, look, baby girl, I said, here goes what the deal is. I said, I'm going to ask the Father in Jesus' name. I said, we're going to go before the Father because he is your redeemer. Matter of fact, what I said in song, uh, uh, chapter 7, verse 2, oh, Lord, my God, and thee do I put my trust. And I said that to her. You to let the Lord know, let the Lord know you put your trust in him. Say to God, Lord, save me from all them that persecute me. Because you see, traumatic trauma and, dem and demons that latch onto it will persecute you. They will harass you. Listen, we're about to see Jesus shut down that thing. So anyway, I led her into a prayer of asking the Father to heal the damaged wound that keeps revisiting her through the gateway of her emotions. You want to find out where it came from? It came through the gateway of traumatic shock and wounds as small children. It was simultaneously done to both sisters at the same time. And both sister grown women were manifesting the same thing. The only difference was one of the sisters was led by the Lord to give me a call for, for a deliverance session. 
and we were able to hit what had hit both of them. We were able to expose what the spirit was doing. So let's go back once again, because I want you to learn how to do it. I don't want everybody to have to need Brother Hybrid. I want to teach you not to need me just to use what God put in you. That's my goal. Anyway, so I started asking the Father. I got her to ask the Father to heal the damaged wound. Lord, that wound that the enemy has been using in my soul, that wound that the enemy has been using, that deep hurt, and even that wound that I did couldn't hardly deal with, that made me shame, that made me feel, I, I had to block it out of my mind because it was too heavy for me to deal with. As she began to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to come in that area, I couldn't do that for her. Listen to me. It's a, it is a, it is the fool a foolish thing for any deliverance worker to think you can plow into people's lives because you so anointed. I don't care if you call yourself the general of deliverance or the peon of deliverance. Bottom line is that only Jesus is the only deliverer up in here. He's the only one. So can we talk? So I had her to ask the Lord to heal the secret stronghold that was in that family. See, those children never told mama. Never told daddy, never told anybody. Many of you, many of you, including in my life, I've had the same experience. There are things that were traumatic that have happened to us, and we never told them anybody. And the demons capitalize on means that no one is saying a thing about. It. Well, going back, because I'm almost done, because I've got a session getting ready to come up in a few minutes. I got the young lady to ask the Holy Spirit. And by the way, I'm going to put this on top of it. You got to know that nothing is too hard for God. You got to know that God is the most powerful thing in the planet. You got to know that your God is here for you. You got to know that God delivers you from your strong enemy. Because if that young lady had an act that is him, oh, that demon at night is so powerful. He's so mighty. He's so awesome. I would have not been able to help her at all. Because no one, no one can bring deliverance like God. So let me get ready to wrap this thing up. I got her to ask God to heal the traumatic shock, to go in there and heal the damage that was done to her as a small girl. She even asked the father to heal her sister as well from those scary, frightening, un those scary, frightening night visitations where no one was there protecting them at that time. And then when I had her to do that, I asked the Holy Spirit, I said, Father, you said you will mend the broken heart. You said you will undo the heavy burden. Father, you said you will let the oppressed go free. So I then began to pray, yes, for the healing of the damaged emotion. I'm not going to use the word inward healing. I asked the Holy Spirit to heal the wound, the traumatic shock by the anointing of your agape love, by the anointing of the power of the blood by the anointing of the resurrected Savior, by the compassion of Jesus Christ, to heal the wound in that young lady, in her emotions. And she began to weep. <laughs> she began to just cry. What was happening, she was being released from the secret wound that had tipped in their bedroom when they were small girls and stayed in the dream realm as a demonic visitation as they became grown women. Now that that was done, I shifted into the deliverance you gear. Then I began to command, I said, in Jesus' name, I command that demonic spirit that is buried in that part of that emotion of trauma and wounds. You may call your name a uh, rape, predator, molestation. I don't give a dog on what your name is. I know this, you coming up out of here. And I began to command it in Jesus' name to let her go. And I forewarned the young lady. I said, when I be get, getting ready to cast this demon out of you, I want you to understand you will, you may feel, number one, soldiers, stay with me. Stay with me, soldiers. I pre-warned her that, listen, as I begin to pray, the anointing will be so loving, so strong, that you will feel possibly and immediately rush in your emotions what you felt that night when you were a child, when that person was coming. But I want you to be still and know that God is there, that the Holy Spirit is there, that his healing is there. So when you are carrying someone in deliverance and counseling, I'm gonna say the bad word again, 
counseling about a stronghold like this, they very well may in their body begin to feel the emotion that they felt at that time. Now, Brother Ivy, why do they feel the emotion they felt that time? You ask a great question, guys, because that that emotion has been locked into a time period in their life at the age it happened. It has been contained and sometimes moving back and forth in time throughout their life, harassing them, tormenting them, or giving them unidentified feelings of unsafety, uh, no help, no one there. And I know, baby, I got, I'm got. i doing Facebook Live, so we don't let me done, and I know my session's getting ready to come up. I, I, thank you, baby. Hey, Ever had a come and I gotta get ready to go, soldier. So, I, I heard you, amen, we, we get, begin to cast that demon out. We command that spirit to come out. And I asked the father to do it gently. It wasn't about ivory. It wasn't about, well, I was a bad man and had power. That's juvenile and stupid. Deliverance is not something you flex your muscles with. It's something that you love and care for the souls you are dealing with. So we cast that demon out. Now, as I'm getting ready to go, as I'm getting ready to go, I want to leave this with you. So we counsel with the person. Mm -hmm. God used the gifts that were in me, word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits. Mm -hmm. The person had read some things on the internet about spirit marriages and all that type of thing, but that was not what was happening. And when we cast the demon out, the torment of that thing harassing her at night, that torment of that thing coming in the dream realm left. Now, with some people, when you pray for them, they may not scream with a loud voice. They may not roll all over the floor. They may just change. Okay? So that is an introduction, amen, of giving you some deliverance insight on night and dream manifestations that can come through emotional trauma. I will come back from time to time and try to share with you all different things the Lord has shown me in these 45 years bringing deliverance to people. That's what I do when I do Skype, phone, or deliverance session. It's 45 minute detailed session. And people, I'm not gonna apologize because of the help or the value or the knowledge God has given me. It's, I want to train you how to do it yourself. So you won't even have to call me. Say, you won't even have to bother me at all. But I'm trying to tell you, when you're dealing with people, we want more than a lot of deliverance hype. We want more than a lot of deliverance power parity. You need to learn to know what you're doing because you're dealing with somebody's child. Well, look, I got to go because I've got sessions that are getting ready to start. God bless you. This is a this is Apostle Ivory Hopkins saying to you soldiers, you be blessed. God bless you. And thank you for tuning in on this Facebook Live, on this YouTube, on this Vimeo session on mentoring and deliverance. God bless. Bye-bye.